episode 120, Quest for You. Welcome back. I want to start out with a little excerpt from Seth Godin's blog, a recent one. If you listen to my podcast, you know I like to read his blog. It's titled Modern Laziness. The original kind of lazy avoids hard physical work. Too lazy to dig a ditch, organize a warehouse, or clean the garage. Modern lazy avoids emotional labor. This is the laziness of not raising your hand to ask the key question, not caring about those in need, or not digging into ship something that might not work. Lazy is having an argument instead of a thoughtful conversation. Lazy is waiting until the last minute. And lazy is avoiding what we fear. Lazy feels okay in the short run, but it eats at us over time. Laziness is often an option, and it's worth labeling it for what it is. So today, I want to help you see the areas in your life where you might be lazy. You see, it's easy to sit back and not get engaged to be quiet in meetings when hot topics come up, to stay in the background, to not say anything when something should be said, to let others worry about the big things, and to stay where you are. It's easy to live your life from your devices instead of showing up in person, to just check in instead of actually being present, to ignore what others recommend, suggest, and what you know to be good. It's easy to tune all this out and stay with what you've always done, That's laziness. That is living in a place of comfort. And we know change does not come from comfort zones. I want you to know that I strongly believe that we all have something great within us to contribute to the world. You may not see this right now. Believe me, I don't see it every day either. There are those days when everything is stark and we just hope we make it through. Last week, my car window got smashed. The second time within four months. And I was angry. Angry at Oakland, how little the police does, how bad the people are here. Oakland, the city that really has a special place in my heart. Where my friends are, where I found myself again after being lost for many years. The city by the bay. The city that makes me smile with every sunrise over the port. The glistening water, the diversity of people. But for a day, I was angry, ready to change my mind about Oakland. Not every day needs to be positive, rosy and bright. Sometimes the dark days are needed to help us appreciate the good days more. And sometimes the dark days propel us out of laziness and into change. Maybe I need to contribute more to make Oakland better. Maybe I need to be more present, more aware of my surroundings, instead of rushing from place to place and parking in streets where I know I should not be parking. Maybe I should rely less on my car, and then I wouldn't have to worry about it all the time. What I would like for you to recognize is this. We all have the ability to do more. We all can utilize the resources we have just a bit more, to think deeper, to act more consciously, to behave in better ways. We all can contribute a little bit more at work, to be a better friend, partner, or parent, to set a better example to those around us with our character and the person we are, to recognize more opportunities that require our assistance, to open our heart more and connect with others, to bring more curiosity to life, and to invest more into our health and well-being. We all can do a little bit more in many areas of our life. So why don't we? And too often, we hide behind excuses. I don't have what it takes. I don't have enough. I'm not strong enough, smart enough, tall enough, good looking enough. I don't have willpower. It's not meant for me. I simply can't. Our excuses may start from a place of fear, insecurity, and discomfort, But more often than not, they quickly turn into comfort zones. We tell ourselves that we can't, and so we don't even attempt it anymore. We settle with our excuses. We become comfortable, and ultimately, we become lazy. I want you to get up today 
and get out of those comfort zones. Stop the laziness and make a change. You have something to offer, so go after it. Be confident with what you have. And don't worry about what you don't have. That's often what's holding us back. We look for the things we don't have and we make them requirements, must-haves, obstacles and contingencies. We think in order to move forward, we need something else, just one more thing. Forget about that. Use what you have. Maybe you wanted something else, better looks, certain skills, more money, different place. But right now, that's not what you have. So don't worry about it. Take stock of what you do have. Take a look at yourself, your skills, your experiences, the people in your life, your circumstances at this moment, and be comfortable with who you are. Be you. Being you allows you to tap into your uniqueness. Don't compete with people or with imaginary things you wish you had. Be true to yourself and be faithful to yourself and the things that you have. Maybe they seem small compared to what others have. Insignificant. But don't measure. There's nothing ordinary about you. Just walk the streets and look at people. Everyone has something great and everyone, like you, wishes they had something more. It's not about having more of this or that. Life is about acknowledging what you have been given and making the best use of it. Handicapped people win Olympic medals. Dyslexic people become the greatest motivational speakers. Truck addicts become change agents. Obese people become fitness models. Everything is possible if you can see it. You have to see it and go after it. We all have greatness in us. We all have something special to offer. Find it, recognize it, and then use it. Ask yourself, what is my contribution to this life? In what areas of your life are you not living your best? And then begin to live from a place of willingness to use what you have to propel you forward. Stop being lazy. Lazy people think they have all the answers, when in fact, all they did is stop searching. They stop changing and they want to tell you how to live life from their place of being stuck. Don't listen to people that give you advice telling you to just accept what is. Go from thinking you know it all to believing again. Believe in better, in more. Believe in your potential. Start making changes so you can stand out. Have you written yourself off? That's just how I am. I will never be in shape. I'll never drop this weight. I'll never be able to kind to be kind to others. I'm impatient and I cannot change it. I'm not creative. I will never make it in this company, this job, this life. Don't be lazy. Don't make excuses. Don't get so comfortable with the thoughts that you think. Don't accept everything as is. Get up. Start looking. Start experimenting. Face your fears. Ask the hard questions. Lean in. Start making changes. Move into the direction that you know you need to be going to. And find what works for you. I'm ending with a quote from Howard Thurman. There is something in every one of you that waits and listens for the sound of the genuine in yourself. It is the only true guide you will ever have. And if you cannot hear it, you will all of your life spend your days on the ends of strings that somebody else pulls. Don't be lazy. Don't be pulled by others. Push yourself just a little bit more. We all can do just a little bit more. Go out today and try. With much love, I'll talk to you soon.